Hey guys, Eric here out at the Bethlehem Golf Club. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to stop pulling your wedges. Before we dive into that, just a quick word from today's video sponsor. I wanna to talk to you today about Live View Golf. Now you guys hear me say all the time that you need feedback when you're practicing. You need to know if you're actually doing what you're trying to do. And the best way to give yourself feedback ultimately is video. And not only is video the best way to give yourself feedback, but being able to see yourself simultaneously as you're doing a movement is the best form of video feedback. It's the best way I've seen to make changes in your swing and be able to coordinate the differences between your feels and your reels. Live View is super easy to use and set up. Simply set it up behind or in front of you. You connect it with your iPad or phone, pop that on the ground. You can actually do your practice, see yourself as you're doing it, the best way to expedite your process. I encourage you guys to check out Live View Golf. We'll put a link in the description down below with a coupon code. All right guys, so pulling your wedges. Now, as I've been coaching for a long period of time now, one of the constants I see, especially as handicaps go a bit higher, is the issue of pulling the wedge shot. So if I've got a wedge in my hand and I pick a green or a flag out there, right, the pull shot is the shot that you hit that goes left. Kind of a straight left without any curve to it. Sometimes those pools can be small with the wedges and it's not a big deal, we still have a birdie putt, but sometimes they can be quite large, right? You have to be missing the green to the left and really making the scores go up unnecessarily. So we wanna get the wedge shots to start online uh, and really lower your scores, right? And I've got a sand wedge here, a 56 degree sand wedge, and this video and these principles are gonna apply all the way from a, a short little 50 yard shot, even all the way up to full swings, really, and, and full swing short irons. But there's two things I'm always looking for uh, that I want you to look for if you're hitting these pools. The first one are the setup principles we'll talk through, and the second one is the swing path. <clears throat> so the swing path piece, which we'll dive into, most everyone that I see that hits pools that has the setup stuff right that we'll go over, happens because their swing path is too far to the left. Right, so I hit the ball left, I swing the club left. There's a couple of ways why that would happen, um, how to fix it, we'll go over that. The first thing in terms of setup, and there's three main things I'd look at. One would be the actual aim, so where the feet are aimed. Number two from face on would be the ball position. And number three from down the line would be the shoulder position. So let's start with the feet. The first thing you should do if you hit pulls, as simple as this is, it's like talking grip every video, but it's important, is where the heck are you aimed, right? A lot of us that hit these shots to the left might just be aimed left. So let's do the simple stuff first. I've got this golf ball here. This yellow stick is where I'm trying to hit the ball. And what I'm gonna do first is just take another club and I'm gonna put it on the ground, just parallel left, just kind of train tracks left of where my um, target is. So if I'm going here and I'm gonna hit this shot, let's say 100 yards, my feet line is parallel left about 10 yards. This would be a starting point. So in fact, before we even get this in here, let's just start with the this down. Now, if you're on the range and practicing, I would also highly suggest a start line stick or club. So one club for your feet, one club for your start line. I mean, this would be a perfect place to start. And it might be as simple as this. And I want you to just hit a couple shots and make sure that your feet are aimed too far left. So this doesn't need to be right on your toes, right? But maybe just an inch or two in front so you can see. So if you're hitting pulls, I'd like your feet to be the same distance, so my left toes and my right toes are the same distance away, and I want the ball to launch over that start line stick. So let's just hit a little shot here with that. Now if I hit that, like I did there, and it happened to go straight towards where I want to go, that's it, right? Watch the rest of the video, maybe for entertainment, but that's maybe all that you need to do when you practice. Very rare that I watch high level players practice, especially the highest level and not see sticks on the ground. Very rare. I go up and down the range, no sticks. Okay, there's a correlation there. So club on the ground for my feet, club on the ground for start line. And just start with that. Hit a couple shots with that. This would be set up piece number one. If you notice that your left foot's farther away from the club than your right foot, your stance line is too open. Now, as we go for shorter wedge shots, I don't mind an open stance, but if you have an open stance and you hit pulls, this is one area to look at. Can you leave the open stance and do something else? Certainly, but this is one area to look at. The longer the swing, the more square I would go. Even, you could even try, get the left foot a little closer than the right. There's no rules here. You can do whatever you want. So if you hit pulls, look at the start line. 
Get the left toes a little closer than the right and learn to launch the ball just right of the stick. Even over exaggerate, right foot's pulled back a little. Imagine the ball launching right, just to the right of that start line stick. That would be another way for me to get rid of the pulls. Now the second thing for setup would be ball position. The more forward the ball position goes in your stance towards my left foot, the more I'm likely to hit a pull. I'm gonna hit the ball more forward on my arc, more pulls. The more back towards my right foot, the more the ball would start farther to the right. Now we wanna find a blend here, right? I like to see if I'm hitting a sand wedge, the ball more underneath like my left eye, okay? So if I looked at my heel, you might go two to three golf balls inside your heel, would be a good starting point. So if I went here, I probably wouldn't go any more back than three golf balls. You see how that's in line with that third golf ball? Three balls inside your left heel. That would be about a neutral position. Now, if I went forward, only one ball like this, I'm more likely to hit a pull to the left. So if you're the pull player, you don't want to err on a forward ball position. You would want to err on the ball being more neutral, about three balls. You can even go slightly farther back. Remember, there's no rules here. No one's coming out to give you a one stroke penalty because your ball position is not perfect. Feet are in line with the stick. I've got the ball three balls back at least, maybe even one more. And I'm going to feel like I'm launching the ball just right of that stick on the ground. And the way this is going to work is you kind of go through this video sequentially, start with the number one factor and kind of work your way back if that doesn't solve it. So that might be the solve for you. Feet, ball position, right? Feet a little more square, ball slightly farther back, no more pulls, goodbye. The third thing though I would look at would be the shoulder. So I can have my feet aimed somewhere and have my shoulders aimed somewhere else. In fact, I see it all the time. So I could have my feet good, but then my shoulders are pointed too far to the left. When my shoulders are pointed too far to the left, my right shoulder too far forward, that makes me want to swing more left. When I swing more left, that makes the ball want to start more left. More pulls, higher scores, not good. So I've got my feet square, I've got my ball position neutral, about three balls inside my heel. And then I'm looking at my shoulders. When in doubt, I'd pull the right shoulder back more. How much more? To the point where the ball starts where we want, but probably more than even you think. So when I take my setup, my feet are square, ball position, I'm gonna take my right arm and pull it back. If I'm looking at the camera from down the line, I'm gonna to look to see a little bit of my forearm above my right arm. So your right arm might feel a little more bent and under too, that would be good. Straight right arm and high right shoulder and forward means pulls. Bent right arm with right shoulder back would be more starting to the right. Let's hit one from there. And again, I'm hitting kinda of three quarter-ish wedge shots here, uh, but this would apply from 60 yards or even full swing. So just one more time with the setup. Stick on the ground, stick on the ground. Feet are square, ball position is neutral to slightly back. A little bit of a closed stance would be fine. And then I'm gonna check my shoulders, right shoulder back, right arm under, launching the ball just right of this club. Okay, good. Now the last part, like if that doesn't solve all of it, then you definitely have a club path problem. You probably have a club path problem either way, but if you go through those three and you're still hitting big pulls, like you definitely swing the club too far out early and or too far left and across, okay? So what I would start with to keep this simple is I'd take another club and I'd line it up to the ground, uh, on the ground to about the right edge of the green. So if I got a flag in the middle of the green and maybe there's 10 yards to the right of the flag, 10 yards left of it. I'm gonna angle this club on the ground about at the right edge of the green. So when I stand here, you can see a difference in the angle of this, which is straight with my feet, and this club, which is my club path. I'm going to, in my mind, swing the club on this sort of club path. Now notice that's too far to the right. What I'm betting on is you're gonna feel like the club works this way, and in fact, it's gonna work on a pretty good circle around you because you normally go out and across. You always fix a problem by doing the opposite and exaggerating. You always fix a problem by doing the opposite and exaggerating. So if I'm saying you're too far out and across to the left, you gotta feel like it's too far in and to the right. So I'm gonna get this club path working more to the right. Now, if you do this drill well, and get half of the setup pieces correct, that ball is not gonna to pull to the left, unless you have a wild release pattern, which maybe we can't go over in this video. So feet square or closed, ball neutral or back, shoulders square or closed, 
club path is feeling like it's working on this club line, which is about at the right edge of the green. So you're feeling like you're moving the club path towards the right edge of the green. How do I know if I did it correctly or not? If you did it correctly, the ball should not pull. How do I know I did it too much? Or if I did it too much, what if I swing too far to the right, then the ball will push too far to the right. So then what do I do? Then you do each one of these, just play around with doing slightly less, any or all. Feet square to slightly closed, ball neutral to slightly back, shoulder square to slightly back, pull the right shoulder back, right arm under. Club head's working on this club, which is towards the right edge of the green. Now, you're not gonna hit pulls from there, okay? The ball might over curve. Who knows what it's gonna do once it leaves your, it's in the air like that, but it's not gonna start left. It's not gonna go straight left. The last little thing I'll say on release pattern, if you're still doing this and pulling them, I would highly encourage you to check out cabornogolf.com or go get an in-person lesson because there's something else that I need to be able to see on video. The last little thing I'd say, because it depends on your grip, it depends on your wrist angles, is your release pattern, if you're hitting pulls, could come from something as simple as the club head passing your hands too early. It really could, it could be that simple. Which then you need to feel like your club head stays behind your hands longer. So you might feel like the right wrist is bent back a little longer as you're doing this. You might feel like the elbow stays towards the target a little longer instead of pointed towards the left. You might feel like the logo of the glove stays pointed a little more to the right a little longer. These are just optional pieces. But to really fix the pulls, you want to start with the setup and then the club path. That's how I'd work. And if you're still doing pools, we'll put a card on the screen for gregornogolf.com. Send in your swings, your plans, and start at $69 a month. You could never hit pools again. Get an in-person lesson somewhere. Do something to not hit pools. We'll also put a card on the screen for a similar style video. Any questions you have, leave a comment down below. Like the video if you liked it. And thank you guys for watching.